Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I do a lot of things that help me laser focus on one specific thing, which is helping people live better and longer. I do that by making fitness understandable, attainable, and fun, and I do that in a variety of ways. I teach fitness via mass media. My craving is to reach large audiences, so I spend the bulk of my time on TV, radio, books, magazines, doing corporate speaking engagements. I work online. Any way I could reach a huge amount of people, I do it. I'm a professional race announcer, which was is one of the most fun things I do. I man the start and finish lines of some of the largest, most prestigious running events in the United States. I own a school running program called The Morning Mile, where I help get kids moving in the mornings and their families and the faculty. And uh, last but not least, I'm an author. And uh, my noisy cancer comeback is my my baby right now, and it's it's going really well. My noisy cancer comeback is a little bit of an adventure tale. It's a memoir of my 16 month battle with breast cancer, which was completely unexpected because I'm the girl who does almost everything right. I walk the walk, um, but like, you know, a lot of people, it happened to me and, you know, all the weird things that popped up, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I never thought I'd write a book about me, but when the side effects of cancer became weirder, <laughs> weirder and more plentiful, I, I started to laugh at it. I thought, this is kind of hilarious. And absolutely nobody tells you about this stuff. And, you know, people tell you, you might be sick, you might be bald, you might be tired. And I was all of those things. But I also had this bizarre experience. And I know a lot of other cancer parents, a lot of other cancer patients experience the same thing. And I just thought, you know, they'll get a kick out of this. People in general will get a kick out of this. And I do believe I handled it well. You know, I, I was brutalized by cancer, but... I also traveled the country hosting probably half a million people live while enduring the cure. And if I can do it, hopefully other people can do better than they are. And, you know, I think it's important to thrive while trying to survive. And, you know, the other cool part about the book is it gives a behind the scenes look into the running industry, which is pretty spectacular. My favorite sections of the book entail all the goodness in my life, despite all the horrors. And that really was a result of incredible people stepping up and, you know, not only offering opportunities, but kindness and support. And uh, I like the funny stuff too, because this, so many funny things happened throughout my cancer treatment. I actually have uh, two chapters in the book. One's called The Bright Side of Poop on My Face, which actually happened. And then I have another chapter called When Things Go Wrong, Don't Go With Them, Naked in the Airport, and I ended up naked in the airport. So yeah, those are my favorite parts. So what inspired you to write about your cancer experience? Uh, I definitely was inspired by the fact that nobody was talking about the realities of cancer care. I mean, again, people just talk surface level. And since publishing my book, I've gone back to read other people's memoirs and they just kind of stay at a surface level. It's a little bit fluffy. And I got into the gory details and I thought that was the best thing I could do for the other people going through it today and moving forward. And then also I thought that was the most entertaining stuff. And I, I do have a sick sense of humor. I'm completely sarcastic. So every obstacle I faced came with a silly nickname and I became Shrek for a while. And then eventually I became Voldemort for a while. And you know, it made me laugh. Cancer also made me cry and cry and cry. It was incredibly stressful, but you know, there's a lot of funny stuff that happens and I think it was worth um, mentioning. 